Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Injured Gadgets iPhone 6S Complete LCD and Digitizer Take Apart Plus Reinstallation. So the first thing you want to do if your phone is still on is make sure to turn it off. And once you have made sure it's turned off, go ahead and use your pentalobe screwdriver. We carry this at InjuredGadgets.com. And you will need this screwdriver to remove the two screws on the bottom of your iPhone 6S. Next, using an iSSMO tool, which we also carry on our website, go ahead and go around the headphone audio jack. You should find a divot around this area. It might take a second to find it. But once you find that little divot, you should be able to pry the screen just a little bit. Please note the iPhone 6S, unlike all of its predecessors, actually has adhesive around all of the edges, sides, top, and bottom of, it, of the phone. So the screen won't just lift off, you will have to carefully go along the sides to lift off this screen. So what we're going to do with our ISSMO here is we are going to go around these edges to break that adhesive. If you want, you can always use a heat gun and that will help speed it up. We chose just to use the ISSMO and go around the edges with it. Once all the adhesive has been let off, you can go ahead and slowly open up your screen. Please note the screen assembly is still connected to the actual phone's housing. So we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, little remnant adhesive that got stuck upon the screen removal. Next you will use your Phillips screwdriver to remove two screws covering the battery. We always recommend disconnecting the battery before you ever do a repair on an iPhone or any phone. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove the two screws covering this little shield. Under the shield is a pop connector connecting the battery to the logic board. We are going to use our nylon black spudger to disconnect the flex cable. We don't recommend using your screwdriver or any metal tools on the board. We always recommend using a plastic or nylon spudger uh, if you're ever going to be touching the actual logic board of the phone. Next, using your Phillips double zero screwdriver, go ahead and remove four screws, they're Phillips head screws, at the top of this bracket right here. I point them out. You're going to remove these four screws. Make sure not to mix them up. Keep them in the order that you remove them. They are all four different sizes. You do not want to mix these four screws up. Alright, with that bracket removed, go ahead and use your nylon spudger again to disconnect the three flex cables as shown right here. Be careful disconnecting these, you don't want to push too hard against the actual board uh, where they plug in because you could always damage the board, so be careful doing this. Once those three cables are disconnected, your screen assembly should come away from the housing just like that, very easily. Alright, so from all here on out, we're going to be working on the part on our left side, which is the full screen assembly. It includes the home button, the touch ID sensor, the front camera proximity sensor, ear speaker, and a microphone, and of course your LCD digitizer assembly. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the home button flex cable as well as disconnect the actual home button. Please note the home button itself is very sensitive and if you actually rip it, your Touch ID will no longer work even with a replacement home button. Alright, you're going to go ahead and unscrew those three screws right there and that little silver bracket will come off fairly easily. Once that has come off, you are going to go ahead and disconnect the home button flex cable from the long logic board home button flex. Once you disconnect that, please note that the actual circuitry of the home button flex is stuck to the actual frame of the assembly with adhesive. If you want, you can use a little bit of heat using a heat gun to disconnect that, but be extremely careful. I cannot stress enough how careful you need to be when removing this so that you do not rip this home button flex cable. Alright, with that home button removed, 
you can go ahead and start working on the little bracket that covers up your front camera proximity sensor, microphone, and ear speaker. This is held in by a total of three screws. They're all double zero Phillips. You will go ahead and remove these three screws. With those screws removed, you can go ahead and remove the bracket, which was held in place. This will now reveal your front camera. The next part right here shown is the earpiece speaker. Now removing this flex cable, the front camera and proximity sensor, you do need to be just as careful as you were with the touch ID sensor. Um, now if this does tear, it is still replaceable, so it's not a huge deal if it tears, but obviously you don't want to go without a front camera proximity sensor for a few days. So please note how careful we are. If you want, once again, you can always use a heat gun or a blow dryer to heat it up. It is stuck with a little bit of adhesive, so take your time doing this. Don't just yank it out because you could rip it very easily. With that removed, we will now remove the back shield plate. This plate is held in by a total of seven screws, three on each side, as shown right here. And then, of course, one screw at the top on the right-hand side, right there. So we're going to go ahead and remove all seven of these screws right now. Alright, now this little metal shield can come off. You will need to swap this over to your new assembly if you are replacing your assembly. What we noticed when we were lifting this off is it is actually connected with some adhesive strips on both the front and the back. So you will obviously need to remove those from your screen assembly. There's an adhesive strip right here. It's stuck there. And the adhesive strip on the back is stuck essentially in the exact same spot. We're going to point to it right here. So you will need to either cut or remove that adhesive to transfer this over to your new screen if you are replacing your screen. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and reassemble this whole assembly. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and put those seven screws that you just took out right back in. Once those seven screws are in, you can go ahead and start working on your front camera proximity sensor bracket. The first thing we do is lay in the little microphone. On the bottom, please note there are little hole cutouts in the flex cable. You want to line them up perfectly with the little spots on the actual back of the front screen assembly. It will line up. You want to put those in their exact same spots. Once that's lined up, go ahead and put the proximity sensor into the two brackets, as shown right there. It should go into place. Don't push it too hard. If it's not an easy little snap, don't force it. Take your time on this part. Next, go ahead and grab your earpiece speaker, line that up, and then put the top of your flex cable with the two little holes all perfectly lined up in their correct place. Then go ahead and place your front camera on the right-hand side into its little bracket as well. And then you could take your little metal shield and you will go ahead and screw that in with the three Phillips head screws. Alright, with that in place we can go ahead and start working on our home button and flex cable with the brackets. Go ahead and place your home button into the circular hole on the bottom of the screen assembly. And then also with this, once again, there are little cutouts on the flex cable. Make sure they line up perfectly with the actual front screen assembly. And then once they have lined up perfectly, go ahead and plug the flex cable in. Make sure it's an easy snap. If you're having a hard time with it, take your time and make sure it goes in there properly.
All right, let's go ahead and grab our bracket. Please note that one corner of the bracket actually goes under that little shield, so make sure it's in there properly. Make sure this is a, a straight little shield. You don't want it to be crooked. You don't want it to be raised up any. And go ahead and screw these three screws right back in. And with everything now connected, we can go ahead and attach our entire screen assembly with all the small parts installed back onto the actual logic board of the phone. Please note, I like to connect the right side cable in first. Um, right here, I'm just looking at which cables to put together first. This was our first time actually disassembling and reassembling this phone. We had never opened it up before, so we're essentially doing the repair just as you guys are watching it. Now, if you are having a hard time connecting these in, please don't just jam them in. Make sure that they go in there with an easy snap. Make sure that it's a straight click and then not left or right or anything like that. You want it to be an easy click, just like that. Alright, we're going to go ahead and grab our little shield and screw that back in. Please remember, all the screws on this phone are completely different sizes. You do not want to mix them up. Uh, and you want to put them back in the order that you took them out. So make sure you do that. Make sure you essentially put the shield with the screws and line them up. Um, you'd never want to mix any of these up. I mean, it could damage the logic board, something could go in too far, and it could mess up a lot of things on your phone. All right, we're going to go ahead and reconnect our battery now. And once the battery is connected, we will go ahead and take the little shield covering the battery pop connector and screw that back in with the two Phillips screws. With everything in place, now we're going to go ahead and slide the screen assembly in from the top. You don't want to go from the bottom because there are little brackets at the top that slide into place first. So you want to go in from the top and then go along the sides. Make sure not to go along one entire side, but more so left to right and push the screen into place. Don't force it down because if you force it down, you could end up cracking it. Once that's done, go ahead and grab your pentalobe screwdriver and your two pentalobe screws. We're going to go ahead and screw those back into the phone. And of course, once you have everything done, go ahead and power up your phone. It's a good idea to test the touch screen. It's a good idea to test the home button. If you do see lines in it, if you do see blocks in it when you power it up, it means you probably did not dis uh, you probably did not connect it all properly. Uh, so you might have to redo a little portion of the repair. But everything looks good here. Thank you for watching our video. Make sure to comment below, like us on Facebook, and subscribe here.